much more of a concern as to why. see that I was playing my stuff out, which was doing to please other people. And the more I gave, the more he took. And I knew that that, that was not right. Yep. So we talked about it and finished it. And ever since then, I mean, I, it's not that I don't, do not, not go out, because I do, I do. <coughs> and no one asks me out. And Do you ask anybody out? No. Okay. And there are reasons why. What's the reason? Rejection. Fear of rejection. Fear, fear of rejection. Yeah. But then there was one night I was at the um, RSL and I was having some fun dancing. So I danced with this man and it was wonderful, the music. And then he went up to the bar, got a drink. And this other man came and asked me for a dance. So we went up for a dance. They came back. And then the other big man came back from the bar. And here they are both standing, right, standing. And I'm sitting. And Fighting the, over you. And the first thing that came to my mind was, I looked up and I said, if you're both after sex, I don't do it, so you might as well leave. <laughs> So the only men that you're going to probably attract are men who reflect that emotion at you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So the danger for you entering into sexual encounters is the kind of men who you're going to attract are these kind of men who finish up being bastards and only let you down. However, it is changing, honey. <laughs> <laughs> on and off for five years. Yeah. And the first three, I couldn't do a whole year. I'd have to stop after six months because yeah. I was so depleted inside and worn out from their, their sexual stuff mm -hmm. and I couldn't handle it so I'd stop massaging, go and get a conventional job. Yeah. But what I've managed to do now is work through my own sexuality issues mm -hmm. and I've done it for I'm in my second year now, but no one still asks me out. So do you feel you've worked through your sexual issues? So you're telling me you're, you're telling me you've worked through your sexual issues, but if you're not attracting something completely different, 
then you can't award three sessions. Not all of them, no. Does that make sense? Yes. And one of the biggest issues that you have are this, this underlying belief about men, that men are basically bastards who are going to let you down. And all they want is sex from you anyway, which you're not putting out. No. <laughs> now, that's the core emotion that needs to be healed. Mm. And, and without that emotion being healed, what you're going to do is attract men who are going to be the kind of men who want to use you sexually. Understand? And why I've managed to do over a year of massaging is because there are some beautiful, beautiful men out there. Mm -hmm. And I've had to, well not had to, but I've, um, I mean I would have five, so 30 men a week on my massage table. And I would be getting perhaps one out of 60 that... Project sexually yeah. into. Mm. Mm. But I do understand that they're only hurt in their own way mm. and... Um, so I before you used to get a lot more sexual projections than that? Yes. But now you're getting a lot less. So that's telling and, you that something's changed. Mm. And my, my thoughts of them are so much different now yeah. because whether they're male or female, we are all... Yeah, see, now, now you're going all intellectual on me. Yeah. yeah. Let's step back down into the emotion. The real emotion that's still inside you is this emotion that men are bastards and you can't trust them. That's the core emotion. Mm. How does that relate to your dad? Dad and I were like two peas in a pot. Mm -hmm. However, all he gave, well not all he gave me, but what he gave me mostly was negative strokes. Like, I only got attention when I'd done something wrong. Right. So I spent all my life when I was at home did with he, Did he have this viewpoint towards you that, like, almost like he glorified you a bit? Like he treated you as the princess? Oh, he put me on the pedestal. Yeah, okay. There's a lot in that. Yeah. You haven't actually given up your relationship with your father. Well, then I married for 18 years and the same scenario happened again. Yes, it will. And if you don't give up your relationship with your father, you're going to attract a man who's very similar to mm -hmm. your father. In this case, it's a man who will worship you and treat you like a princess, but he won't actually really treat you like a princess. Like, there's this emotion that you're looking for from him. And, and so that's the kind of man you'll attract at the moment. And that's still in you, this emotion. Mm -hmm. This emotion is going to be about cutting the umbilical cord, if you like, between yourself and your father. Mm -hmm. And your father has this viewpoint of you too, that if you're sexual, then you're no longer his favoured daughter. Oh. See, a lot of, a lot of men, um, with their daughters, they enter this kind of relationship that they don't have with their wives. The relationship mm. with their wife is that, oh, my wife, I have sexual relations with my wife, so she's a woman, but there's this underlying emotion of that sexual relations are a bit dirty. So in their own mind, sometimes it's this concept of, oh, uh, my wife's actually a bit dirty, you know, because she's a woman I have sexual relations with. With their daughter, they then worship their daughter as the woman, the ideal woman. The daughter, they don't want to have sexual relations with anybody. Does when, that make sense? Yeah. Because and this is something that's happened to you. Because when I was in my teenage years, you know, the males that were lurking around had to go through dad before they got to me. Exactly. And they had to get dad to you, Even your terminology is your dad's terminology. Uh, your male's lurking around. <laughs> now, what, what you need to do is allow yourself to feel this emotion that what you there's, there's two things going on is you're looking for a man at the moment who will treat you like a princess. Of course, that's not your ideal relationship. Your ideal relationship is an equal relationship where you both have a passionate desire for each other, but not where one treats the other like higher than them. Mm. But your, the relationship with your father is that he treated you like higher than himself, mm. but only in an asexual way. So in, a, in order to get his approval, you had to be asexual. You had to be without sexual desire. You follow me? 
So you have a deep shame about your own sexual desire. And also, therefore, a deep shame about any man who might have a sexual desire for you. The truth is, any relationship is going the man's gonna need to have a sexual desire for you. Mm. Otherwise, this relationship isn't going to work. Mm. But you're looking actually for a man that doesn't have a sexual desire for you. Oh no, honey. No. <laughs> well, what did you say to these men? Oh, but that was about three years ago. It doesn't matter, there's an emotion inside of you still. What's the emotion? What did you say? You said, you finished dancing, what did you say? They just came up to you, what did you say? Well, I felt intimidated that, and that's the first thing that cropped up they, in my head. They both had a sexual desire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what happened to the second man who stuck around? He just learned that he couldn't have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because you told him he couldn't mm -hmm. have. Yeah. So what do you want? You don't want him to have a sexual desire. Well, no, you? I want them to love me for me, not for what, I, what else I've got. <laughs> Isn't part of that what is you? Yes. So but I don't want a man to want me for sex. I don't want that to be the major priority. Oh, well now you're talking about something different. That's not what you said to me, mate. You said if you're thinking about sex at all, this is an injury inside. Oh. See, what you're doing at the moment is you're justifying yeah. your statements to him. But that is closing you down from the emotions that cause those statements. And in closing down from the emotions, what you're not allowing yourself to do is actually realise that love is sex, sex is love, like that. Remember, at the moment in your mind, sex is over here, love is over there. In your mind, that's how it is. And also what Mother said. Yeah, what did she say? That men were only after one thing, and so yeah. I believed her. Yeah. So when I believed it, I... Because um, I believed it. I manifested that, but, and I thought it was true, so I pushed them away. But there's an emotion inside of you that caused you to do that. And this is it. This is the problem you're facing in the last 10 years. The reason why you've had, shall we call it a dry spell? This leg's hurt. <laughs> The reason why the derived spell is happening mm. is because you've created it. You've created it. Mm. There's been men attracted to you, but they've been attracted to you sexually as well. And because you feel that sexual attraction is bad, you don't allow them to have a sexual attraction for you. What's wrong with a man having a sexual attraction for you? Because I want them to love me. Uh, but if not love, because if love not. is sex, then the, se the sexual attraction is part of any love that they are going to feel. Mm. You're basically asking them to cut down their erotic feelings for you and just have other feelings. So what is left is some principled feelings, some feelings that you're their sister. And so what do you finish up going to get? A man who treats you like he's your sister. Because you don't want the erotic feelings from him. Here, in your emotions, you don't want the erotic feelings. You think you do. No, you do not. Well, I, I won't know until I get into one, will I? Well, you won't get into oh. it. <laughs> with this emotion, you won't get it. Does that make sense? You will not attract a man with this emotion. Because if any man who wants to be attracted to you will want to be attracted to you sexually, as well as in these other ways. But you're already telling him from your soul, you don't even have to open your mouth. You're already telling him from your soul that you don't want a sexual connection. You say you do, but you do not. <laughs> the reason why you don't is you've got these belief systems mm. kicking in. Mm. These belief systems kicking in. Men are bastards. All they're going to do is want me for sex. That's yeah, anger. That's, yeah. that's anger. That covers over a sadness. Because a relationship, here you go. Come on. A relationship is not built on sex. Well, this is where you justify yourself. Right? Ah. The relationship. <laughs> sex is a good foundation for Okay, well I'll go. Look but in. remember, any time I've been talking about sex, I've been talking about sex with love. So love yes. and sex together. Mm. Now what you're doing still is you're separating love from sex. Mm. You're saying that this man should be able to love me, then at some point in the future mm. he's going to love me sexually. Mm. That's not how it works. So men uh, get into their... Not men. 
Everyone. It doesn't work for, this doesn't work for everyone, men and women. Okay. They you are separating it, love from sex. And what you're doing is you're asking these men to separate love from sex as well. Right? Now some of these men are not that injured. So they're not going to separate love from sex. Or if they do, they'll say, all right, I can love you like my sister, but I can't have sex with you. I'll find someone else to do that with. Are you going to end up in a relationship like that? No. No. So this is of your own creation due to that injury that is yet mm. to heal. Yeah. And you justify it. You justify it by saying, mm -hmm. men are bastards, you know, you can't really trust them, they've got to love me first before they have sex with me, and all these things. Mm. But the whole thing that is that you're already making a statement to them that they can't even love you <laughs> before they begin. Mm. Mm. Because how they're going to love you is going to be in a complete way which will include a sexual way. Mm. Does that make sense? So allow yourself to really get into those emotions about how angry you are about men being bastards who only want you for sex. Because there's some really deep core emotions underneath that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then you'll attract a man who does want your hot body uh, <laughs> and who wants you, the rest of you. Mm -hmm. you know? But he's not going to separate that. He's not going to say, oh, I'll, I'll love the rest of you first and then six months later, I'll love your body then. He's not going to do that. No, I wouldn't expect that. No, that's what you do expect. That's what you told these men. Five days later. Five days later, you hopped in the sack with one of them, but that doesn't change anything. <laughs> you told these men your belief. Right? And so five days later, one of them jumps in the sack with you. you in bed. Sorry? In bed. And what? And had passionate love. Because oh. <laughs> okay. that word jump in the sack, it, to me, is um, unkind, unnice. Oh, okay. So you have some emotional problems with me saying jump in the sack. Yes. Well, this man jumped in the sack with you five days later. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. He did. <laughs> I'd have to erase that word sack. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not okay to have sex in a sack. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have it in bed. And a nice setting. Oh, okay. So I can't do a quick and dirty outside in the front morning. To me, no. Oh. Because you're only after me for sex. Yeah. I've got conditions, haven't I? Very much so. And this is what's driving a lot of a lot of what's going on. You need to really strongly look at those conditions. There's a lot of conditions there. The truth is that, remember I said yesterday, that in the end you will have a sexual relationship 24 by 7. Sleep state or wake state won't really matter. There will be sexual feelings going to it. It doesn't mean you'll be making love the entire time, but there will be sexual feelings going between the two of you 24 by 7. At the moment you couldn't cope with that. At the moment you would feel that's dirty, shameful, not nice. You would feel quite a lot of different emotions about that. All judgments covering over some mm. underlying mm. core emotions mm. and you need to allow yourself to get to those core emotions. Mm. If you don't, what will happen is you'll keep on separating love from sex all the time. Mm. And something else, like sometimes I think, oh, this is the one, you know, on the massage table, like, oh, this is great. And I get all excited. Yes. So who's projecting sexual <laughs> <laughs> Dream it. Dreaming. Yeah. And then I think they're going to ring me up. They're going to ring me up. And they don't. Mm. They don't come back. I think they're stuck now. <laughs> <laughs> so I get all excited just to be let down. Yeah, but see, there's a few other things going on here. You're, you're very angry with me. Yeah, you are. I'm, I believe you. You believe me. You are. <laughs> and, and Disappointed. You're angry. You're angry. And it's okay to be angry. It's okay to recognise, yeah, I'm angry with men. I expect men to chase me. I won't do any chasing. I am not going to do any chasing. They're going to have to chase me. This is the feeling you have. I have asked. No, I see. See, this is the reason why I asked you right at the start. When you went dancing, yeah. remember? Yeah. And, and when, like, I, I said, how many of them have you asked? <laughs> and you said none. No. But that's in the last that's six that's months, I have. Right. I said, like, give me a ring. Tomorrow morning, we'll go for a walk up Mount Kula. Give me a ring. 
chase me and will go for a walk. Yeah, because <laughs> because if I chase them yeah. and they don't want, yeah. then more feelings are going to come up. Like what? Um, they feel, don't want me. I'm no good. And all you're doing is avoiding those feelings. Hmm. So therefore, if I leave it up to them to come forward, then I know that they want to pursue something. I take some shortcuts. That's not a shortcut. <laughs> it's an avoidance of an emotion of rejection. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll So you I'll need to feel the, you need to feel the emotion of rejection. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But you are quite angry with them. Uh -huh. And you need to... But one of the reasons why you're angry is you want them to pursue you. Because... I can... Um... Yes or no? Do you want them to pursue well, you? Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> reason being... <laughs> you want to give them a reason? <laughs> because if I ask them, mm -hmm. and they have a reasonable reason why they don't want to go out, because yeah. I, there's one bloke, Russell, I say, now, let's go and do something. Every time I ring, there's something happening and he can't come. So I think, well, if you want, what you do you come feel to well? me. Well, what's this? What's this? No. <laughs> Can you see your anger? Can you see your anger there? Yeah. Can you feel it? Mm -hmm. You need to feel it. Because underneath that, there's some real strong feelings. Mm -hmm. Real strong feelings that you're going to be rejected and so forth. Allow yourself to feel those feelings. Because if you don't allow your feelings, what you're doing at the moment with a lot of these feelings with the opposite sex is you're justifying them. You're justifying mm -hmm. them, giving yourself mm -hmm. the intellectual reasons of why you follow this pattern behaviors. The truth is the reason, the real reason why you follow this pattern of behavior we've met is because there's some underlying emotions that are quite strong about men, anger-based emotions about men that you need to release. And the only way to release them is to get to the underlying sadness, the underlying grief that's underneath that. That's the only way to release them. But if you don't even acknowledge your anger, you'll never get to it. You'll never get through your anger to that grief. Does that make sense? And if you don't do that, you're not going to attract men that you want. And when you do attract the kind of men you want at the moment, sometimes you are attracting men who would be quite good for you, but you're actually rejecting them because they actually are projecting sexual energy at you at times, which you then assume means they're a bad man. Because you have, it, you have these links between sex, men, mm, nasty, you know, like... You have these I, it's obviously still in me that what I hear mother said. Yeah, because at one moment with God means also healing any problem you have with any of God's children. Now, if you have a problem, if you're a woman and if you, if you have a anger feelings towards men, you have a problem with half of the world's population. That's a lot of children to be angry with, that you're actually angry with. And if you're a man and you're angry with women, you have a problem with half the world's population. And so can you see how it's not possible to connect to God because of that? It's obviously uh, quite a big emotion. So we need to heal, want to heal these emotions between the sexes, between <coughs> We want to heal them so that we can be free of them. So that's very, very important. And in your case, there's a lot of stories that you tell yourself as justifications for your actions. And you will find that there is story after story after story that you can tell yourself. But the law of attraction is telling you the truth of how you feel. And if you don't recognize your own feelings that are un or out of harmony with love, any anger feeling, any stuff you feeling, any of those kind of feelings are all out of harmony with love. There's an emotional reason underneath them, and we need to find those emotional reasons if we want to heal our relationship with the opposite gender allow yourself to discover those emotional reasons. Mm -hmm.